But Ryan, didn't you already make a video on Pearl Jam's animal? Well, yes, I did, Mrs. Davenport. But listen, here's the thing. In seven and a half years, making 1,512 <laughs> song videos, my earballs have sharpened immensely, and I've gained the ability to isolate guitar tracks so I can apply said earballs with unmatched precision. Did you say persimmon? Persimmon's my favorite fruit. Okay, no time for that, Mrs. Davenport, because before we learn to play Pearl Jam's Animal for real this time, I'm going to take just a moment to thank the following people for signing up for the Patreon supporter of the Cause Club, William Atkin, Jennifer Seagraves, Call Me Walter, Ethan, and Tyler White. Thank you very, 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 very much for your support. And if you would like to find out what that's all about, the link will be in the description. First things first, the main riff. Grab the E string, fifth fret. That's easy. Then the D string, seventh fret. A6, five, open. And that's it. So I'm gonna pluck the D7, hammer on to A6 from nothing, pull off, pull off. And I think that's the way to get it moving. That's the main riff. Of course, the super fast guitar fill is one of the things that's been giving me fits throughout the years, but this is it for real this time. Here's the notes we're listening for, not how you play it, but just the notes. It's E flat, C, B, A, B, D. And there's one of two ways you can do this. Either way you choose, we're gonna start on the A string 6th fret with our pointer finger, hammer on from nothing to the C note on E8, pull off to the B note on E7, and now you can go down to A on the 5th fret, but that's a lot of stretching between these fingers for me, so I'm gonna play that A as the open A string. Either this, or this, like that better, and then hammer on to that B from nothing, up to the D note on A5, and then you play your A-shaped D chord. <laughs> yeah. You hit that D chord in two spots there, but the second time, I never heard this before, it's an A shape on the fifth fret, DGB5, that's a C chord, and I love to hear these little classic Rocky things in Pearl Jam that I never knew were there before. And back up to the D, so. And back into the main riff. In the chorus, I'd rather be, I'd rather be with an animal. One guitar is playing just an A note. I'm gonna use E5 and it's straight up eighth notes. A little muted. While the other guitar grabs the B string 10th fret and it's this. And one time, you hear that E, that C note on E8. You can throw that in whenever you want, that's fun. funky. And I just want to note that Mike McCready can be seen in the wild, so to speak, playing that funky part as the A octave chord, so A12 and G14. Hey, that was an animal. You can fatten it up like that if you like. Then we get the big, huge rising chords. They're bar chords, this kind of bar chord, your E-shaped major bar chord, A on the fifth fret, to C on the eighth fret, on the 10th fret, and we're going to G, but they play a C-shaped G, so pinky finger on A10, ring finger on D9, pointer finger gets the bar on the 7th fret, and middle finger gets B8 there. That's the G they play. You can play any G you want. I'm particularly fond of dissident G, which is 3-3, three, three, open G, and then 5-5. Five, five. Thickest G known to man. But on the record, it is the C shaped G. A, C, D, C shaped G. 
OMG. And the very last thing to cover is, I believe it's Mike's little tiny thing. It's going to be the B string. 10, 10, 9, 8, and then landing on G9. pieces so go use your precision earballs persimmon earballs and figure out which one goes where when do we smell a campfire version coming on thank you so much for being here i hope that was fun and helpful and i will see you next time with very similar stuff <laughs> goodbye listen as guitar players we are always searching for that special tone that we hold in our minds earballs and i'm very excited to share with you the guitar pedals 101 course from wampler pedals and it's probably not what you think rather than being about multitudinous arrays of pedals it walks you through the various points in the signal chain from guitar to pickups to amp to cabinets that influence how pedals respond and brian wampler illustrates his points and makes lots and lots of different tones with only two pedals. I took this course, I found it highly informative, so if you are on a lifelong mission for your tone, I encourage you to do the same, and it's only 20 bucks, so the first time you don't spend $200 on a pedal you don't even need, and find the answer in some stuff you already have, or maybe get you know sent off in a different, more helpful direction, you'll be totally glad you did. And the best part is you do not have to be an expert in these matters to gain from this Guitar Pedal 101 course from Wampler. It's for noobs, but there's also stuff for more experienced folks in there too. I owned zero pedals five years ago, true story, and now Miss Poopadoop and I are obsessed. I wish I'd have found this course four and three quarters years ago. It would have saved me a lot of brain power and energy. So check out the link in the description.